Minnesota's Frederick Anderson. The former netminder for the Toronto Maple Leafs signed a two-year deal this offseason to come across to Carolina, and he has been spectacular. 4-0 with a 1.75 goals against average. He'll be going up against Jack Campbell, who's 2-1-1 one one on the season with a 2-22 goals against average. Campbell trying to right the ship for the Toronto Maple Leafs, who were pummeled 7-1 last time out against the Pittsburgh Penguins. So for the Hurricanes, it's simple. Keep the train rolling on the tracks and see if you can keep that momentum coming off of a perfect two-game road trip. Actually, a three-game road trip, a little stop home in between. And here we go as Sebastian Ajo wins the draw. Canes and Leafs underway. Thanks for joining us. It's Austin Matthews. Makes a short little pass, and Nylander leaks out into the Kane zone. Swatting his stick at him is Jacob Slavin, and... Nylander misses everybody and sends the pass all the way back into the Toronto zone. Go to school on that set play. Nylander has had a good start flying the zone. Now Matthews busts in, tries to walk around Slavin, but a great job there by the Canes defenseman. Matthews couldn't get the shot away. Now Ajo gets knocked to the ice. Crowd wants a call early, not happening. He'll change it up. And Nylander will just bat one in. That'll be handled by Anderson, and he'll make the save, and we'll get a chance to look at the forward lines tonight for the game strip. The guy I want to focus on is Nino Niederreiter, because this has been Carolina's most consistent line with Jordan Stahl and Jesper Foss. And there were some questions who would play the left side coming into this season, because Warren Fogel was very trustworthy in that spot. And Nino moving his feet, he's playing a quick game, has really done a fine job. You take the face off to the left of Frederick Anderson as the captain. Jordan Stahl against John Tavares. It was captain against captain, but Stahl waved out. Niederreiter takes the draw. Lost as the shot was pitched wide by Dermott. And now Carolina will get to it. Behind the net is Pesci. Takes a peek, and the Canes will clear the zone. Now Jesper Faust gets a stick to it. He's had a hot start to the season. Three goals in four games. This line has been very good for Rod Brindamore. Now they're in the attack zone. Stahl, skate to stick. Back up top, Shea. Faust, Niederreiter. To Faust. Back to Niederreiter. Kane's trying to work a mini cycle, and they do as Stahl gets to it. Stahl sends it up top. It's Pesci. He'll wrist when that goes wide of Campbell's net. And will bounce out of the zone. 18 minutes, 25 seconds. Remaining here in the first period as we are just underway in Raleigh. Gaines will deflect the puck high in. The Campbell will have to glove down. And now a turnover behind the net. Trocek gets to it out in front. Trying to find Svechnikov. Couldn't connect. But the Canes keep the pressure on. And Svechnikov and Trocek. Playing keep away from David Camp. And it will now find its way to Jake Muzzin. In Toronto gets a little bit of an assist to push the puck out of the zone. Our bench interview, Trocek. Heck of a first man for check. Causes the turnover. Leads to a heck of a chance. He can skate, he is a tenacious player, has good habits, his stick on the ice. And he just anticipates. If the stick isn't on the ice, he's not able to pick that off. And he had tremendous chemistry to Svechnikov on Saturday. There come the check board forward, the new Toronto Maple Leaf makes a heck of a play as Andre is lurking. Now for the Hurricanes. The draw lost by Stevie Lawrence. Gaines will get possession. This line has provided energy for Rod Brindamore's team so far this year as Martinuk gets to it. That's the one thing that everybody has contributed. Every line has found a way on the score sheet. Now the Canes looking for more as Stepan's pass intercepted. But Simmons can't clear the zone. Stepan will get to a turn. Finds his way out front. Taken down is Martinuk right in front of the official. We play on. He's off of the bench. It was Ajo with an intercept, but he had to wait for his teammates to make a change. Martin Hook scored from step on the only game in this building against the Islanders. Heck of a, a reload tracking back to cause the turnover from Derek Stepan. Now the Canes send out their fins. As Cook Kaniemi, who got his first goal as a Carolina Hurricane on that road trip in Montreal. And this line has been dangerous with Ajo recording two goals in that Montreal game, and he's kept the party going. In fact, Sebastian Ajo has gotten a point in all four games so far this year. And you can hear the PNC Arena crowd. Happy to have 
Their team in the red jerseys back here as Matthews cycle spins out in front and scores! Austin Matthews, goal number 200 for his career, first of the season, and the Leafs strike first. It's 1 0 Toronto. He and Freddie Anderson, very, very good friends. And when you're not scoring, simplify, get the puck to the net. He seals the board outlet. So his play away from the puck eventually leads to his wraparound and Freddie gets over, but he's not able to get his stick square. And that vacates the area between his legs. When Matthews was the high forward, he takes away the boards and then uses the back of the net to create and propel himself. And Anderson just isn't able to get over with the stick position he wanted and a big time moment. Congratulations to Austin Matthews on 200 goals in the NHL. Down the road, he probably will be the all-time leading goal scorer for American-born players. Well, now the Canes just thinking about getting the equalizer. As Toronto right back in the zone. Shot is winged wide of the net by Sandine. Carolina gets a little push from Nino Niederreiter. Bats it over to Stahl. And the Canes in the Toronto zone. Niederreiter's been very good with his line mates, Stahl and Faust. In a role where we know he's a goal scorer, but he has been a very good physical presence for the game so far this year. Been credited with seven hits. Kane's gap up in the neutral zone, force a turnover, but Carolina needs to make a change, so nothing will come of that. 15-45 left in the first. Toronto just got on the board. It's a 1-0 lead for the Maple Leafs over the game. Toronto's been trailing virtually all year. Natchez tries to pick the near corner, but his shot Goes over the top of the net and all the way back in the hurricane zone. Now Svechnikov with a lead for Natchez. Keynes into the Toronto end. Kocek again with that four shot. Gives a bit of a shot to Hall on the way out. Now right back in. Kocek trying to play physical, but Toronto will clear. D'Angelo lets it roll in on Freddie Anderson. Natchez with a tip up for Cole. Toronto controls. Five minutes gone by here in the first period. Austin Matthews with his first of the year at 41 last season. The abbreviated year for this Maple Leaf team. Now a turnover for the Canes. Great stick by Stepan. He and Martin, a two on one. Martin shoots just wide as he was trying to go far post on Jack Campbell. And now it's the Leafs, Spezza. He'll lose control, and the Canes have another opportunity. Step on. He'll shoot one right on. Campbell makes the save with the pads. They bat around for it in the corner. Martin gets some help from Shea and Lawrence. Lawrence, the Kitchener native, just grown up about 80 minutes away from Toronto. First time playing against the Leafs. First time the Canes have played the Leafs since the David Ayers game. Stepan has caused two turnovers leading to chances here in the opening period. I think Martinuk was, of course, trying to score, but if not create a rebound, he just missed low on the blocker side. Six minutes gone by here in the first period. One nothing lead for the Leafs. Matthews has got the puck on his stick right now. Has it taken away by Kokaniemi. Kokaniemi harassed by Nylander, and the Leafs trying to stretch pass, can't connect. Carolina back the other way. We got some pond hockey going on here in Raleigh as the shot is put right on by Tara Vinen, but that'll be gloved and handled by Campbell. 13-37 to go in the first. Canes down early, 1-0 to the Leafs. Austin Matthews and Freddie Andes Anderson's relationship. He said, we enjoy spending time together. It's actually going to be pretty funny facing him tonight. Hopefully I can sneak one or two past him. It means a lot playing him, even though we aren't playing together anymore. We still talk almost every day, and we will be friends for life. Well, guys, Austin didn't sneak one on him today, but the two spent their off day together yesterday, watching football and tracking their fantasy teams. Yeah, good friends for life. We're off the draw. Slavin shot. Is handled by Campbell. Good stuff there, Abby. Yes, very good friends are Matthews and Anderson. When you consider a kid from Arizona and a young man from Denmark, not exactly the dynamic duo you'd think of, but they were fond of each other in Toronto. The five seasons that Anderson spent there. And Matthews got the best of Anderson early in this one. 325 in the game. It was the first goal. Now the Canes trying to respond, but Nylander 
Sends it across, and there's Matthews. Has to settle down the puck. Looking to make a play for Morgan Riley. Instead, the Canes will get to it. Flip it high. Tara Linen. Bothering Dermott. Toronto will just sweep it into the hurricane zone. A boisterous crowd here tonight at PNC. As Carolina, for the second time in three seasons, has started the year 4 0. And this puck will be offside, so that'll stop play for the Carolina Hurricanes with 12 38 remaining here in I, the first period. I didn't want to bug it up Freddie on a game day, so I spoke to him at length yesterday. One of the things we talked about, of course, was his relationship with Austin. And I know how meaningful it was to him that Austin invited Freddie to come live with he and his family in suburban Phoenix during one of the COVID pauses. And that really took their friendship to the next level. And one of the reasons they will be friends for life. And you get that bond, special bond between teammates. And Move on as a snapshot put right on by Kerfoot, detected by Anderson. And you know those bonds trip as a, a player who's gone through the professional levels. Well, I just, I, I talked to Austin this morning about my observance that Freddie is a true professional so far, watching him on a daily basis. And, and Austin said because he knows when he has to take care of himself, not in a, a selfish manner, but to prepare himself. Freddie, has, everything that he does is professional in his preparation, not just before the game, days between games. It's been very clear to me. The Canes have benefited from that professionalism. To Anderson, 4-0 to start his career with the Carolina Hurricanes. And he sub two goals against average, and he has been stellar as Carolina offside again, stopping things with 12-10 in the first period. So we get a look at tonight's injuries and scratches, Trip. Well, Rod, his team has remained healthy. Knock on wood, we hope that continues. And they've won. And so Seth Jarvis, the exciting young rookie, hasn't drawn in. Brendan Smith, I've mentioned a few times, he had a good preseason. You have a back-to-back -back with Boston and Chicago Thursday, Friday, and then an afternoon game on Sunday. So I think there's a chance. Right now, it's all about having both feet into this one. But that we could see both of those guys and uh, Antti Ranta making his debut. And now the Canes have Vincent Trocek centering Natchez. And Coach Kaniemi, and now we're gonna get a penalty behind the play. Finally, for the Canes fans, happy to hear that is a power play opportunity for the Canes. Now Pierre Angbal has played quite well. Oh, number 47, two minutes for holding. So far this year, Sheldon Keith, by the way, Toronto's uh, coach has, has juggled his lines and Engvall has moved up in the lineup, and you see the use of the free hand. Tony D'Angelo, happy birthday to him yesterday, draws the call. And the power play at 37.5%. <laughs> Let's hope that uh, that success can continue. For the Canes, it is a power ball power play. And right to work to Tony D'Angelo. His shot deflected. Campbell gets an arm to it. Trocek was at the side of the net. Now Sveshnikov across. Tara Vine and shot right on. Campbell with the save. Puck still loose. Trocek will get to it. And for Sveshnikov. To send it back to Tara Vine. Up top, D'Angelo. Sveshnikov. His shot hits a leg. Ajo trying to get a stick to it. Still loose out in front. Campbell sprawls. And he'll stop things. 29 seconds gone by in the penalty to Engvall. Trocek has had some jump, and Spechnikov, you could see right there. As soon as he got the puck on his natural side, three leaves came to him, right here. Who's the guy that is running the Toronto penalty kill? Dean Chanel. We wish him well. That doesn't surprise me, because Dean knows how deadly Andre can be on his natural side. Yeah, Dean Chanel, the three seasons behind the Canes bench, running the defense. The penalty kill was outstanding, and it's stayed that way with Tim Gleason. They've made a couple of tweaks, but still at it. And now Svechnikov sends it down low. Trocek trying to thread the needle, but his pass is deflected. That'll come out of the zone, and D'Angelo will have to catch up to it. The Canes, third in the NHL, 37.5, as you mentioned. The Toronto penalty kill in the top 10, tied for seventh under Dean Chanel, 85.7 on the kill. That's a good percentage now as Carolina tracks it down. Carolina will go down low. Ajo. Ajo, Svechnikov, D'Angelo, he risks one right on, Campbell makes the save, and the rebound will be picked up by Riley and sent down the length of the ice. Good work, and D'Angelo has an uncanny ability to get shots through, getting to the middle, 
for a pretty good chance with traffic. Now Pesci, his pass. It's Natchez who is flying, lays off for Niederreiter. Natchez to Pesci. Pesci looks for a lane. He'll send it across. Back across for Natchez. Natchez loses an edge up for the stall. Quick shot. And Campbell with his best save. 19 seconds left on the Canes power play. Natchez tracks the puck. Back up for Pesci. Pesci. Natchez. Natchez heads up. Across for Kokaniemi. It's deflected. Good stick by Mitch Marner. And he'll send the puck to center ice. And that'll kill off the remaining seconds on the Engvall penalty. As Toronto is back to full strength. But Stahl forces a turnover. Stahl plays it in the corner. Shot is wrapped high. Kokaniemi. Natchez gets to the rebound. Stahl hanging on to it. He'll lose it. And away comes Mitch Marner, but looks to make a change. Keeps a head up, though, and spotted a charging off to Matthews a little too far. And the Canes, Jacob Slavin, goes cross ice for step on. He'll just lay it into the lead zone. Jordan Stahl made a heck of a play with the lead player coming out of the box. A fair shot deflected, hits the side of the net. Lawrence gets a stick. Can't control in Toronto. We'll send it back into the Canes end. I say that because Jordan Stahl, just inside the Toronto blue line, picked the puck off. It would have been numbers for the Maple Leafs because Angball was just coming out of the box. It led to a chance headed Campbell's way. Nine minutes remaining here in the first period. 1-0 Toronto. Ajo comes up with a steal at his blue line. Finish center. Send it deep into the Toronto zone as the Canes are completing a change. Ajo gives chase. They'll leave it back there. Svechnikov gets to it. Ajo has the stick taken out of his hands. The puck will find Brady Shea. He'll get it back to Svechnikov. Looking for Teravainen. Couldn't complete the pass. And Spezza will come away. Jason Spezza still getting it done in the National Hockey League in his 19th season. Svechnikov, all three forwards were caught deep. But Svechnikov with really noticeable work ethic and got back to make it a three on three. Now it's Simmons. Trying to get to a four check with Pesci. Oh, he is running the corner hard by Nick Ritchie. And Pesci is slow to get up. And Shea jumps on Ritchie after that dangerous hit. What I don't like is Ritchie, who's had a slow start with Toronto, gets demoted to the fourth line. And Pesci's in a vulnerable position here. That's where you have to bear hug. He tried to plow him through the boards. Hopefully, Pesci's okay. All right, now Pesci is getting up to his skates. He's got a word for TJ Luxmore. The Canes find themselves down 1-0 here in the first period. And a dangerous hit by Nick Ritchie. Right to the head of Brett Pesci. We'll see what comes of this coming up. Reason that Pesci goes down in pain. And I just see a player that is committing to the hit, but now he sees he's down. And he still finishes with the elbow. It was the same corner that Ajo went down in the season opener, but Brock Nelson, in that case, there's no way he could project that Ajo was going to lose his footing. The reason that Pesci lost his footing is because of the stick between the legs from Wayne Simmons. And I still think there was enough time for Richie to hold up, keep that elbow lodged in. We continue to play. Well, the good news is Brett Pesci was out on the ice, but he's been escorted back to the bench. Tonight's officials are Brian Pachmar and TJ Luxmore. The linesmen are Brad Kovacic and Devin Berg. That happened right in front of TJ Luxmore. And we're five on five as we play on. With eight minutes and five seconds to go here in the first period. Hurricanes trailing Toronto by a 1 0 score. Austin Matthews, his first of the season, 200th of his career, the only marker right now. It's Brady Shea. Lug the mail to center ice and then deliver the package into the Toronto zone. Going after it, giving chase against TJ Brody on the Canes, but the puck squirts out front. It'll be handled and sent to center ice. Carolina, Ethan Bear got a stick to it, but right back into the Cane zone is Toronto. And the stick to it is Kerfoot. He'll leave it off there, where it'll be picked up by Marner. Now Bear, Pester his man, yes, but Faust crunches into the boards to get the puck to Bear. The Canes looking to clear, but it'll be Kerfoot keeping it in for the moment. Jesper Faust in the right spot. And he gets the puck forward. Jacob Slavin with some speed lowers the shoulder. Goes in on Campbell. Gets a shot right on, but Campbell is able to detect that. 
Jesper Foss made a heck of a play defensively at the end of his shift to be able to give Slavin a chance off the rush. Now Hole will drop it into the Kane zone. Again, you just every single night I think we start taking for granted what Jacob Slavin brings to the party. Plus 80 for his career as the Canes. Brady Shea hammers one right in on Campbell that he's got to handle. Toronto will clear. They have some time and space to move with the puck. Coming down the right side is Michael Bunny. Bunny is 26 years old, but he's a rookie. He's appeared in three seasons, but doesn't have the requisite games played. Had 10 goals last year for Arizona. He's going to go to the net with a purpose. He's a Toronto native uh, relishing the opportunity to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He will get to the paint. I can assure you of that. Renatius sends it across. Trocek. The puck will bounce out of play on the Trocek attempt to send it around the boards. And coming up, the Charlotte Hornets will be taking on the Orlando Magic Wednesday. It starts at 6.30 Eastern on Valley Sports Southeast and the Valley Sports app. Some good pace to this game early, as you would expect. Some noticeable urgency here in still late October. Trocek centering Natchez and Kokaniemi. And Svechnikov has changed places on the Ajo Teravainen line here in the first period for Rod Brindamore and the Canes come up with a steal. Natchez overskates the puck though. And Cole delivers a big hit in the Toronto zone and that'll force Carolina back to their end and Kokaniemi back into the leaf zone. They'll leave it off. Trocek shot goes high. Looking for the top corner. Campbell has a shoulder there. Now it's cleared back to center ice. Five and a half remaining here in the first period. You want to give Kokaniemi the ability to make plays but not turn the puck over. Trocek follows him up and just misses. Trocek's been noticeable every shift he's had so far tonight. Martin takes a bump. We'll get the puck into the Toronto zone for the moment. That'll be worked in and there will be a offside call. Brady Shea and the Carolina Hurricanes find themselves down with 5-10 left in the first period. It's 1-0 Toronto. Not too much. I, I don't talk too much to the goalies, you know, like it's uh, that's that's stop the puck. I mean, that's that's their job. I mean, occasionally we'll have, you know, how you doing type things. It's just shocking because away from the ring, Rod, some of his close friends. I wasn't much of a goalie, but goalie. Ron Hextall, the fine general manager with the Pittsburgh Penguins. They were close in Philadelphia. George Alves. But he lets the goalies be, and I think it's a wise move. The goals that actually played for him. Play for him, excuse me. He's just asked them the most simple thing, stop the puck. So not much else you can ask for out of your goaltenders. And Anderson has been absolutely brilliant doing that for the Hurricanes so far this year. Not only just one goal in his last two performances on the road in Columbus and in Montreal, and then a brilliant performance against the Nashville Predators where the head coach basically credited Frederick Anderson for the win saying he stole it for us. And the Canes trying to keep play going as Marner wiped out in the corner. No call there. Looks like they're letting him play tonight, Trip. Now Shea bats it forward. Stall using his speed to get a stick to it. Tavares will turn it over to Niederreiter. Yeah, this line has been aggressive getting in passing lanes and Creating scoring opportunities. Now a long pass. We'll find Niederreiter. He'll send it across to the point. Shot wire. That hits a body out in front. As Pesci was looking to get on the board. Now he paws it down across to Niederreiter. Pulls. Can't get the shot through. Good block out in front by TJ Brody. Former flame. Now Jesper Faust sends out in front. Quick pass for Niederreiter. Campbell with the save. Follow up by Shane Campbell. He'll get across to it as the Canes have peppered Campbell to the tune of 11 shots so far tonight. Well, the line that has been the most consistent one, Niederreiter, Stahl, and Faust. Another good shift involving the defense. Now you have uh, got the, the defense, or it is actually Shane who's got the defense getting on the board here tonight. What no, that's, that's me. I just think it's been coming, and Shea just about had his first of the year. He worked with his skills coach, I mentioned, on Saturday night in Minnesota. The patience holding on to the puck from Faust, and Niederreiter wasted no time in the follow-up at the right time from Brady Shea. And that was the right non-call. That was a follow-through. Shea is playing the puck. 
TJ Luxmore was positioned in the goal line. Oh, well, again. It's, you can, if you follow through, but you're not responsible yeah. with your stick. Cole was responsible with his stick, playing in his 600th game. Can, congratulations to him. Well, with that, it's time for us to get a look at the Indeed player resume. And that is of Ian Cole, who's appearing in his 600th game tonight, Trent. Well, he's just a winner. Uh, product of the U.S. Development Program, and then Notre Dame, and a multiple Stanley Cup champion with the Pittsburgh Penguins. The culture is uh, as good as it's ever been here, and he only adds to that. Part of the back-to-back -back championships for Pittsburgh in 16 and 17. And Every conversation that you have with him when you ask him about what what are you playing for, what's the motivation, Stanley Cup, the first two words that come out of Ian Cole's mouth. And plus 120 for that rating for his career. He's a responsible player. And now the Canes looking to be responsible on their own end as Toronto will get to it. And Cole sends it out in front, but it goes off of a skate, and the Canes will clear. Svechnikov tracks out a loose putt, shoots, and they say no goal. It's waved off right now. But it looked like Svechnikov picked the corner. That pinballed off the metal. Rod's already tinkered his lines, flip-flopping. Kulka Niemi and Svechnikov. Now a rebound out in front. Chance was put on by Spezza. Now another chance deflected in front by Spezza and Anderson with his best save of the first period. Now Toronto putting pressure on. Spezza wheeling in the Kane zone. Sends it out in front. Pesci with a block out. As Sandine was jumping into the play there, and now we'll get a stoppage as Anderson will hang on. And Rod didn't wait long as he uh, plugs Fetchnikov in with Aho and Terravine, and that's a heck of a shot. The puck was on edge, and he still just about scores. Right call on the ice was made. Just a terrific release. Last five minutes of the period. Puck didn't settle for him. Andre has had some good back checking moments in this period. He's been physical. He was physical later on in his shift after that. That tells you he didn't feel sorry for himself. He didn't get the bounce. And let's see if Ajo has fetched a cup at Terravine and stay together. I right, almost got the bounce there. That would have leveled this game at one. 2.02 left in the first period. Toronto up one nothing. Austin Matthews first of the year. Now Dermott hammers one off of the draw. That'll go wide. It's off the face off. Toronto got an opportunity, and now it's come. Looking it around the boards, but Carolina able to clear the zone. Kokiemi, Kokiemi gets a stick to it, but no further. Carolina will get to it. And try to work a four check as Campbell plays it in the trapezoid. Toronto moves it for Dermott. And Sandine, that defensive pairing, exchanges the puck. Now in front, it's Andre Kasha, who's absolutely leveled at the Canes bench. Now, I didn't like the hit on Pesci from Richie early on and, and the stick work from Simmons. That was an old school clean hit. Now it's Carolina putting some pressure on his Trocek shot. Goes high. Now a deflected pass will get to Mitch Marner. Marner will just ease it to the Canes zone. 65 seconds left here in the first period. Uh, pulling his way out in front was Tavares. Scoops it wide. Kerfoot slaps it around the zone. He's got 50 seconds remaining in the first. Is a shot. Can't find its way through. Tavares trying to control the rebound. He'll send it across for Riley. Riley shot right on the pad. Anderson makes the save as Kerfoot was charging down the slot. And Toronto keeping it in. Marner looking to exchange the puck. He'll just throw it into the corner. Pesci watches Tavares. Now it'll find Marner's stick. Tried to work away from Faust. Good defensive work by the Canes, but can't clear as Matthews comes in on a change. He gets it down low to Riley. Back to Matthews. Over to Riley. 15 seconds left. Canes have been hemmed in their own zone here on this shift. Matthews leaves it for Riley. Riley goes across the ice. Shot right on, and Anderson will hang on. Let's uh, look at a couple of things. An entertaining period. Cole comes across the ice, finishes through the body just after the puck has departed. Watch what Freddie Anderson does with his feet here. I said he has like pinball flippers. He turned over his toe to make sure Kerfoot could not get at that rebound. That's a heck of a play. The things he can do with his feet for a big man are impressive. 
Uh, step on will win the draw to the right of Anderson and the Canes. Will clear as Teravainen gets a stick to it. One second left in the period. Clock hits zeros. And 20 minutes has come to a close. Coming up, it is the PNC Bank intermission report. Brady Shea will talk things over with Abby Labar. We got the bench warmers. Shane and Tripp coming your way. And we'll have your first period highlights from what was an entertaining first frame here in Raleigh, North Carolina. The Hurricanes, they watch Austin Matthews get his 200th goal of his career. Canes have come close, but it's been a one nothing lead for Toronto for the majority of this first period. And that's how we go to the intermission with the Canes trip. Start the second period. Carolina out shooting Toronto 15 to 8, but it's 1 0 on the scoreboard. Thanks to Austin Matthews, first of the season, 200th of his career. As we get ready for the second period, Sebastian Ajo and Austin Matthews duel as we got a good luck there at center ice. And Toronto will push the puck into the zone now. Frederick Anderson run into behind his net as he misplayed the puck. He is bailed out by Sebastian Ajo. Now Andre Svechnikov. I think he actually made a decision once he turned over the puck to get physical and prevent what would have been a sure goal. Now it'll be icing on this Toronto Maple Leafs team. So the draw will be coming back into the Toronto zone. Let's get a look at that trip. Yeah, he, he fans on it and then he recognizes, well, I better finish Nylander. Anderson could have been guilty of interference, but it's a penalty that you would have absolutely taken. Well, no penalty. And Astute play by Frederick Anderson to slow up Nylander and the Canes have to go back to their own end as Toronto delivers the puck into the Cane zone. It's been an entertaining game so far and we are just 40 seconds into the second period. Tavares in the Cane zone, he'll lose it. And the Canes will push it forward but a little too far for Jesper Faust. Jake Muzzin will give it away and Nino Niederreiter chips it in. This line again has been so good for Rod Rindemore's team in the early going as Stahl sends it across Shea. Deflects it down low, Niederreiter jousting for it. He's knocked off of his skates. Now Foss lays the body. Puck still banging around. Pesci jumps in. And the Canes will keep it in. Stahl gets it across Shea, wrists one. Fall off the backboards. Now a second attempt put right on by Stahl and Campbell has to make the save. And Toronto flips it into the Cane zone. Marner will get to it. Pesci bodying up Marner. And the penalty will be coming to Brett Pesci, it looks like, for a trip. And Pesci can't believe it as he shakes his head looking to the skies. My big save from Jack Campbell on Jordan Stahl. Number 22, two minutes for tripping. So what could have been 1-1. One, one. Marner shortly thereafter draws the penalty. You can see Pesci. Yeah, Pesci's argument is my stick is already positioned on the ice. There's no tripping motion. I think he's got a very good argument. Very sound argument. I'm just happy he's okay after that regrettable hit from Richie in the first period that I'm sure is going to get a long, hard look on the off days in the next 24 to 48 hours. Heck of a save from Campbell. Jordan Stahl is playing terrific hockey. Absolutely. Starting this season, Stahl's got a goal and three assists. and. The Canes penalty killers have gotten off to a good start this season as well. They've killed off 15 of 17 power plays, but this Leafs power play can be dangerous, although good stick there by Ajo to interrupt. Matthews leaves it back to the point. Riley shot goes wide of Anderson's net. Nylander settles it down to Riley. Across the way, Matthews. Matthews to Tavares. Trying to bump it out front for Marner. Canes will get a stick to it, but... Toronto will keep it in. Matthews to Nylander. Good work by Ian Cole to try to clear, and he'll get some help from Derek Stepan. Stepan 
We'll lug it to the Toronto blue line, dip it in the corner, and the Canes make a change. Next man up, Pesci's in the box, so Cole goes out with Slavin and makes a heck of a play. And then a big part of the step on. The Toronto power play, with all their talent, just 24th in the NHL, but you don't want to play with this, Scarecrow, because you can get burned with all the talent they have. But the Canes defense now turns and sends it the length of the ice again. Excellent work by Jacob Slavin, and now Campbell has to be quick with a puck as Natchez burst onto the scene. 45 seconds left in the penalty to Brett Pesci. Gaines trying to stand at the line. Toronto looking to gain access, but Carolina bats it right back down. Tara Vinen hustling to the bench for a change with Natchez. And Tim Gleason is really trying to get Bear and Cole more minutes because they don't play on the power play shorthanded. And they both delivered the goods here in this kill. Now the captain, you talk about how well he's been playing, forces an offside there. So a face-off coming outside of the Kane zone. Yeah, heck of a job on the first unit. And, and Marner plays the bumper position. Whoever plays the bumper position up in the high slot has to have very good hands, but I think more importantly, going from high to low, low to high, excellent hockey sense. And he has both of those things, despite the fact he's off to a very slow start. As we just showed you, 107 points on the power play for Mitch Marner. And it tells you how good he is. Now the Canes trying to kill off the remaining seconds here on the penalty to Pesci. Slavin stick in the right spot as always, and he'll wrap it out of the zone. And in 10 seconds, Brett Pesci will go free from the penalty box. 16.30 remaining here in the second period. And the Canes penalty killers have successfully ended this power play attempt. But now's that dangerous time, the waning moments when a power play is over. Toronto, Brody, he loses the handle. Cole will get to it. And Niederreiter chops it forward for Trocek. Trocek in, shoots just wide. He was going for the club side of Campbell as Trocek was in alone. Now Svechnikov pitches one out front, but Muzzin will get a skate to that. Toronto will flee. Through the middle of the ice. Comp to Simmons. Simmons shot deflected by D'Angelo. That'll miss everything. And the Canes get possession. And now Trocek will tip it to himself. Take a hit. Can the Canes keep it in? D'Angelo way up from his defensive position. But Toronto able to clear. Niederreiter is making quick decisions. He's playing a fast game. And there he leads Trocek. Trocek just misses. Now Campbell has to play the puck off of the backboards and does. And the Canes will get an intercept. Tara Vinen trying to carry it in. But Kerfoot with the steal. Aho, oh, good back check. As he interrupted Kerfoot. And Toronto makes a complete line change after that. And a quick pass that misses Tara Vinen, but it bounces off the boards. Campbell has to play it. He'll keep the puck moving. Now Martinuk. Out here as the Canes need to complete a line change. Pesci gets to it, and that'll allow Carolina the opportunity to do so. It was good to hear Brady Shea see the same game that uh, we are from up here. The pace in this one has been very noticeable, very fast game. Now it's Nylander from the pass from Matthews. Nylander using his speed circling. Throws one back to the point. Sandine's shot deflected to the corner. Slavin gets to it, and Canes will clear. Yeah, this is moving at NASCAR pace here. Matthews into the hurricane zone. He'll leave it off for Sandine. And now Muzzin shot. And that hits a body out in front, and the Canes will deflect it as Jesper Foss got in the way of the Jake Muzzin blast. Now Ethan Bear tries to complete a short pass to the captain, Jordan Stahl. 14-10 remaining here in the second period. Coaches recognize, even in October, that you don't have to practice unless it's absolutely necessary. Both teams took the day off yesterday, and I think it's led to a high-paced, highly energetic first half of this game. Let's take a look at some three-zone action. Carolina after an excellent kill. Cole was a part of it. Slavin was a part of it. Cole uses the back of the net, no dust off, and then Niederreiter doesn't take one, he takes two looks. Two looks for Mito Niederreiter. One, two, and just chips it to an area that Trocek can locate it. Now the face-off in the Kane zone. Carolina will bat it forward. 
Coming up with a puck is Martinuk. He's got Faust with him. A crossing. Campbell makes the save. Yes, for Faust looking for his fourth. And Jack Campbell with a dazzler robbing the Canes forward. I think the Canes may go on the power play coming out of break. We'll Boy, what a feed. Look. Have that all sorted out when we come up. Hurricanes have had two glorious chances in the second, but they still trail 1-0 to Toronto. Stones that these two hit this summer. Brady Shea tied the knot with his new wife, Gracia. So we are very happy for the Shays. And yes, for Foss and his wife welcomed a baby girl, Kimley, guys. Looked like Chris Pachmero was gonna make, Brian Pachmero was gonna make a call, but there is no call. We remain at five on five. Great stuff, Abby. Congratulations to the newly formed Shea family. And yes, for Foss has had plenty of early gifts for the little one. Almost had another one here tonight. But as you mentioned, Trip, looked like we're getting a call. Five on five is where we stand here in the second period. Well, I can tell you, uh, one of our true heroes is now Brady Shea's wife, Gracia. She's a nurse. 100% is Natchez. Trying to feed the puck to Trocek, but that'll be intercepted by Kasha, and he'll send it to the Kane zone. Will it make it for icing? Yes, it will. Yeah, it looked like uh, Pac Merrill was going to make the call. He didn't. And uh, Campbell makes the spectacular save before we go to break. And Gracia Shea is a nurse, and she was on the front lines in the early stages of COVID in New York City in the most inspirational manner. So congratulations to the two of them. High school sweetheart. She's from Minnesota, like Brady. And again, all of our thanks to the Frontline workers who have worked hard to keep us healthy as Bears shot right on to flick through and they'll score! Sebastian Ajo! Might have knocked that one through Campbell and the Canes have leveled this game at one. The Hurricanes, I go all the way back to their kill. Teravainen keeps the puck alive, but more importantly, he allows Ethan Bear to pinch down low. So high marks to Teravainen as a responsible high forward, and Bear wasted no time, just got it to the net, and Ajo continues an outstanding month of October, getting to the front of the net before Spezza in the nifty redirection. He has had a point in every game this season. He now has four goals to tie Andre Svechnikov for the team lead in that department. And now Svechnikov sending it across looking for Ajo. Is this line starting to feel it now? Ajo being taken into the boards by Dermott. No call. Carolina keeps it on. Shot deflected again by Ajo past Campbell. Because the Canes had an empty net that they were looking at on the deflection. Can they keep the puck in the Toronto zone? No, they can't. It comes right out. And now a steal by Nylander on Niederreiter. Nylander trying to get his shot through, but that's bothered by Tara Vinen. Good back check there by the Canes winger. And now Niederreiter comes out with it. We've got a new game here in North Carolina. As we're tied at one. Hurricanes and Leafs going back and forth. As now it's a flip into the Toronto zone, and that will let us all catch our breath with an icing on the Canes. Ajo nearly just scored again, and, and Sebastian Ajo, boy, the complete player he's been. He wins a draw cleanly on Spezza, center on center. That battle will continue. Takes a look, elusively gets to the front of the net first. I've always said he's slippery like an eel. I go back to the 2015 tremendous draft. If you were to redraft right now, who would you take first? Martin or Ajo? I take Ajo. I would agree with you on that. We already talked about who would I pick as a general manager if it came down to it, Mr. Tracy. You're high on my list. And I think that redraft, not many people would disagree with you as the Canes. We're fumbling with a puck in front of their own netminder, and then they'll just ice the puck here, so we'll get another face-off back in the Kane zone, despite the hustling Nino Niederreiter. I mean, what a find he was in the second round. The Hurricanes took Noah Hannafin in the first round just after Marner. And I just look at the complete nature of his play. Mitchell Marner is a heck of a hockey player. His numbers substantiate that. But his appetite for winning, his fire, and his constant 
motivation to improve all aspects. He can give the assist to Ethan Bear and Andre Svechnikov. Picks up his fourth assist of the season. He has eight points, and now it's Stahl feathering it for Faust just out of the Swedes' reach there out in front. The puck's kept in as Pesci shoots it. That'll deflect up into the netting behind the netminder, and that will stop things here. And let's get a look at that 2015 draft class. A lot of heavy hitters in that one trip. Well, some that are off screen here, too. I Everybody's going to say I have hurricane bias. I take him number two. I mean, I look at some of the other players, Miko Rantanen, you know, the, the fellow Finn, how he is playing in, in, in Colorado. But I just look at what Sebastian Ajo means to the Carolina Hurricanes. And again, it's all about hockey and that fire that lives, breathes, marinates inside of him. I think that's going to be one of those draft classes, what, the 03 classes like that, that you look back in time and just see so many great players. Now, D'Angelo off the draw. His shot goes wide of the Toronto net. Carolina keeping it in. Lawrence throws a body, gets it back. Lawrence looking for Martin. The puck will bounce and will be handled by Hall. Toronto having trouble clearing. Step on with a great pinch. Martin will get to it, interfere with it, and then Toronto will flip it deep. Now Cole in a skate race. Cole will get there, but he is bothered by Comp. Carolina's Cole, though, will get back, send this the length of the ice. This will be an icing against the Hurricanes. Well, tonight's featured item of the game is your favorite Carolina Hurricanes jerseys. And you can secure yours at carolinaproshop.com. From the road to the third to the reds, whatever you're looking for, they've got you. And those jerseys are sharp, and this fourth line that's on the ice has given some quality shifts. Now Marner wins the draw. Puck is deflected. Lawrence using his big body to get to it. Turns it on and he scores! Stevie Lawrence puts the Canes in the lead. What an individual effort by the young man who grew up just outside of Toronto. What a goal. The dream to score in your first game, as you mentioned, Mike, against the Toronto Maple Leafs. All effort. His line mates heavy lifting off of icing. Martin Nook and Stepan turning. I saw a similar goal in Chicago. Tyler Johnson scored it last night against Detroit. And Lawrence just one-upped it. He'll never forget that moment. And that line has been excellent through the first half tonight. His first of the season in his first game against Toronto. Now the Leafs flying right back into the zone out in front. And Anderson with a huge save on Richie, who crashes into the net. Oh, Anderson had to be ready as Toronto comes right back in Carolina. He's made all the consequential saves that occur at different points in every game. You've just got your first lead of the night. Loads up on that left skate. Richie's coming in like somebody's coming to home plate. It doesn't rattle the ultra cool calm Anderson. And I continue to talk about those quick feet. They were on display there. The Hurricanes have responded with two goals here in the second period to take the lead. And you talk about those quick feet for Frederick Anderson. You know that this is trying to figure out when you settle into just a game here is an icing coming up and the faceoff will be coming back to the Kane zone. But you, you talk about how he uses those skates to explode and make these saves. And it, it just doesn't seem anything rattles him. And then there's Stevie Lawrence, who you've got to be over the moon for right now. Well, I actually saw him on the way in. I was getting ready to interview Rod. She said to him, you're getting one tonight. Well, Chipper Thomas strikes again. <laughs> See face off to the right of Anderson. Let me know if I'm going to win the lottery too, Trip. I'd appreciate that. I've been trying to win it for years. <laughs> Let's see, puck now, back and forth. Got a good one here in Raleigh, and thanks for joining us. Mr. Tavares trying to skate away from D'Angelo. Leaves it for Riley. E. Cole muscles his way to the puck. Kokaniemi tries to clear Tavares with the keep in. Then Trocek throws the body. Cole can't paw it down, stays in. Tavares' rising shot goes over the top of the net. Natchez chops at it, still loose. Cole knocks it to the blue line. Kept in by Toronto. Brody gets it to Kerfoot. Gaines were flirting with disaster there. Now Marner, he has the puck. Trying to center it for Kerfoot. 
Good work by D'Angelo to deny a pass, but Tavares left alone. He rings it off the post. But the puck will come free in the Canes. Kokaniemi knows they need a change, so he'll ease it into the Toronto zone, and Carolina will do that with nine minutes remaining here in the second period. One other note on that conversation I had with Lawrence. He told me, he said, Trip, I have to shoot the puck more. Well, all of what he did there, that effort, highlight reel, go for just keep doing that. The ultra likable forward that he is. Remember, he was passed up in his first draft year. And then the Canes took a chance on him, and as he paid off, Sebastian Ajo has to love the reaction to get the equalizer. And Stevie Lawrence, you just put the Canes up two to one. Sebastian Ajo has started this season on time, Trip. Well, he's he started every season on time right from his rookie year, but he's been a slow starter historically scoring goals. And he'd be the first one to know that. He won't say it, but he knows it. And he is just a joy to watch. He's a joy to watch as a player with his elite skill. But he plays like a giant for a smaller superstar. But it's his personality as a professional with an underrated player that impresses me. Now the Canes. E. Cole will settle the puck down. Toronto bats it to the side of the net. Still loose right there. Anderson tries to paw at it with a blocker. Instead, he'll get some help from Stepan as Engville was right at the side of the net. Now a turnover and the puck is deflected to the side and that goes off of the body of Kasha. And Toronto keeping some pressure on. Muzzin's shot though is blocked by Lawrence, the goal scorer, and that will go out of play. Big shift from the fourth line continues and Freddie Anderson makes the huge save after the bring you out of your seat goal from Lawrence. And continuing with my conversation with Freddie that I had yesterday, I mentioned it in Hurricanes Live. A moment he'll never forget in Toronto. The great Johnny Bauer, one of the all-time Maple Leaf greats. He and former Hurricane Curtis McElhaney were asked to be pallbearers at Johnny Bauer's funeral. That is goaltending royalty. For those of you who are not familiar with Mr. Bauer's work, the Hockey Hall of Famer, and as the puck squirts free, and Campbell will make the save. You know, glove that with 7.55 remaining here in the second period. Uh, Campbell is a neat story based on what he's overcome, how he's persevered to make it to the NHL after being an original Dallas star draft pick. His personality, I mean, he is about as nice of a guy as you'll ever meet. A at times, I think, for a goaltender, too nice. But, I mean, his teammates will play hard for him because, let me tell you, He's grateful for every opportunity, every start he has in the league. He had a heck of a regular season last year. Ethan Bear gapped up on Bunny, thwarting that Toronto chance, and Carolina comes away with the puck. And it'll be lost at the blue line. Nylander will get to it. Sveshnikov will give chase for the Canes. Caravine tips it forward, and Slavin moves up from his defensive position. And he'll retreat back to keep an eye on the puck as Nylander lays it off for Bunny, but Matthews puts himself way offside there. 7.15 remaining here in the second period. A 2-1 lead for the Hurricanes. Both goals here in the second period. Let's get a look at Sheldon Keith, the head coach for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And a little bit under siege right now as the Leafs have lost two in a row and coming off of that 7-1 loss in Pittsburgh the other night. Well, he looked at the game in Pittsburgh that got away from him, and he thought it was unacceptable, but there were a ton of redirection, own goals the night before against San Jose. They played very, very well last week against the Rangers, and it was the Igor Shosturkin show. Just a terrific game. I mean, the pressure, it's through the roof. And that's all the more incentive for Carolina to win a big game like this for Fred. Indeed. And you know that that would put Toronto a little bit on tilt if Anderson continues his performance here in Carolina and gets a win here over his former team. As now Tavares gets his stick to it. Bothered by Niederreiter. Trying to avoid Nino Niederreiter. Gets it out in front to Kerfoot, who shot blast wide. Niederreiter comes out with a puck. Now Faust. Never gets to lose, but Niederreiter with a good forecheck now. Jordan Stahl. Using his big body to get to the puck, but breaks his stick and has to leave for the bench. Bobby Gorman will give him a new twig, and the Canes will watch Toronto make a change as Anderson settles the puck down. And Slavin being watched by Richie. Richie has a dangerous hit in the first period on Brett Pesci, but Pesci appears no worse for wear. Is didn't miss any time in this game so far, but something to keep an eye on. Now Slavin. 
Nice. Kick the puck to Kokaniemi across to Slavin. Slavin's shot, though, is deflected off of hole stick. Muzzin tries to get to it. Slavin way deep, and he's going to be called for a trip. As Toronto hangs on to the puck right now, we'll wait for a touch up here. Slavin can't believe it, and neither can the crowd. And now Kokaniemi will touch that. And Jacob Slavin, who had two penalty minutes all of last year, will be serving two minutes when we come back. Kane's up 2 1. Goes for this trip. Yeah, this is the once in a blue moon portion of the tour. And actually, his stick was on the outside of Paul's skate. Again, not really a tripping motion, but this is where you lean on all of your defensemen to kill penalties to fill the void here. Especially with Pesci and Brady Shea to do the heavy lifting here. And Jacob Slavin, who spends a lot of time on the PK in the box right now. Kane's penalty killers, one for one tonight. And they'll be charged to do it again as Toronto will help him out. Throw the puck out of the zone, then Stahl. That's the puck away from O'Reilly. Stahl turns on the speed. He is a one-man PK right now against Austin Matthews and company, taking 30 seconds off of the penalty to Jacob Slavin. That's a captain. He knows Slavin is atypically in the box. He trains with him here in Raleigh in the offseason. What a shift. Now Toronto into the Kane zone, and they'll throw it away. Mm -hmm. Roar of approval from the Canes fans here in PNC Arena. And now another turnover as Carolina We'll flip this one off of the scoreboard, so that will stop the things. And speaking of the unusual sight, Jacob Slavin last season averaged nearly 23 minutes a game. He was a plus 22. First Lady Big Trophy winner in the franchise's history in Carolina slash Hartford. Second player since 2003 with 50 games played. Playing over 20 minutes and only two penalty minutes in last year's win, the puck went over the glass. Well, I'm not going to argue the call, but just look at how res if there's ever such a thing as having a responsible stick on a penalty, the replay showed it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The uh, stick I, is the poster child for responsibility. Absolutely. As the Canes still have some time to kill off. Under a minute is the shot from the sharp side from Engvall. It's handled by Anderson, now kept in, deflected out in front. Richie's there, back in Swats again. Anderson holds down the fort, and Carolina knocks it to the point where Sandine will control. Now slapped out in front, Richie trying to get a stick to it. He can't, Baird chops at it. Engvall will keep the puck in along the boards to Sandine. Sandine walks the line. Back to Engvall, a little loose with the puck. Trying to get to it. His step on, can he? No, but Opportunity kept in. Spezza, bump pass for Richie. His shot goes wide. 19 seconds left in the power play for Toronto. As it's Sandine to Spezza. Spezza gets it down low to Richie. Richie sends it across for Engville. Can't hang, hang on to the pass. Five seconds left in the penalty. Good stick out in front by Tara Vinen. He deflects it away, and a couple of tired penalty killers will get a change here with three seconds left in the penalty to Jacob Slater. Most desperate in all the right ways shift as Tavo Teravine has had all season. Comes down low, willing to pay the price. As Anderson had committed. Well, this is excellent stuff from Tavo Teravine. Always underrated defensively. I go back to the play he made on Carolina's first goal. Is he ever a gamer? You were talking about the poster boys for a responsible stick with Jacob Slavin, who's out of the box. Kane's penalty killers do it again. Teravine and the poster boy for Gamers is a wrap chance behind the net from Tavares. Deflects out in front, and Anderson makes a big save. And Anderson, more importantly, gets a whistle because Slavin having to come back to his own end. You have three defensemen on the ice, so a stoppage is a very, very good thing. Two monstrous kills here in the second period for a variety of reasons. You're down one nothing. you lose Pesci. You have all the momentum in an electric Monday night building, by the way. And you lose Slavin. And you really didn't give up a chance. You had the desperation from Ta Tavo Teravainen and company. This is good stuff. Toronto 0 for 2 on the man advantage. They had two shots on that power play. They had zero shots on their first power play opportunity as Tavares waved out of the circle and Matthews will take it. 
and Stahl will win it. And the Canes will push the puck forward into the Toronto zone. 325 remaining here in the third period. Bear with a keep in for the Canes. Good work by Ethan Bear. Niederreiter to Stahl. Stahl lays it back. Or Slavin with a nice move around Marner. Gets it down low. Niederreiter scores! Oh, that's a beauty! A Picasso painted by the Hurricanes to take a 3-1 lead. Nino Niederreiter, second of the season. The great gentleman, Jacob Slavin, is. I don't think he ever gets upset, but he might have been upset that he actually had, had to head to the penalty box. Because he's just out. Oh, look at this little juke job. Draws two Maple Leafs that allows the goal line to become available for Niederreiter. And twice now on the Lawrence breakaway. And now Niederreiter that had slight elevation. But the lower portion has been available on Campbell. A couple of highlight reel tallies. Lawrence and now that one in this period. The Hurricanes have struck three times here in the middle period. Still time left to take a 3-1 lead as Kokaniemi loses the handle. Going to be picked up by Cup. It's all good now for the Carolina Hurricanes. Toronto trying to get any of the momentum back in their corner as the puck bounces around in the slot and that'll be rolled forward and Anderson sees that the whole way. He'll stop things here with two minutes and 40 to go in the second period. Another big save for Anderson after a Carolina goal, and good for Niederreiter. I like this line. I don't like it. I love it. I love it defensively. Three veterans, but they're going to get their cookies, and Nino needs to know that. Look at those three veterans. I mean, the ideal checking line that can play in the attacking zone and provide offense. And Nino Niederreiter, I mean, he's got to know that. I'm sure he does. And what he's done, I mentioned it in the first period, because that was a hole playing on the left side with Jordan Stahl that Warren Fogel did nicely. And Nino playing a very quick game, quick decisions, quick feet. Good for him. Jacob Slavin, it was his fourth assist of the season. Same for Jordan Stahl and Niederreiter's second of the year. Scored on opening night. Now he's got the big goal here. And now there's a pile up in the corner in the Toronto zone involving Terabyte. And he's got to go to the bench and Toronto will come back the other way. It's a shot put. Right on, Espetsa set up Richie and Anderson. Calm with the pad once again. The pinball wizard, his trip has named him. And now it's Faust lowering his head into the corner. He'll get the puck to Ajo. Ajo takes it away from Sandine. Faust into the slot. D'Angelo tries to be a little too unselfish there as the pass misses his Canes teammates. Who started that whole play late in the period with a good puck management decision? The hash marks along the wall, Sebastian Ajo. High reward, low risk, late in the period. Now Matthews will just tip this into the Kane zone. Stahl will go after it. You can hear his teammate tell him to go around the boards hard with it. That will be just pushed forward by Slavin. And that forces Toronto back to their own line. A minute 20 to go here in the second period. As Nylander gets to the puck, but Slavin with a responsible stick was there. Still loose. Nylander pushes it across the blue paint. Sandine takes a hit from Stahl, but Nylander with the loose puck. Spinning into the circle. Looking for a shot. That deflects off of Foss. Rolls to Anderson. And a desperate Nino Niederreiter knocks it away, but kept in Sandine across the Dermot. 60 seconds left here in the second period. Sandine goes off the lively boards on front. Nylander pitches one just wide. Oh, an active bounce off the boards, and Toronto throws the puck back in the Kane zone. They're offside, so they got to tag up. And you hear the roar of approval from the Kaniacs here in Raleigh. Is this a Monday or Saturday? Feels like a Saturday or a Friday. Either way, they've been treated to a heck of a period by the Carolina Hurricanes, and they're appreciative. Now Tavares tries to get around Shea. Can't. Pesci fans on his attempt to clear. And Toronto will come up with a puck. Marner, 16 on 16. It's Trocek. Pins Marner to the boards. And now Marner will come out with it. Pesci knocks it away. What a play by Brett Pesci. As Toronto threatened late. But the Kane defenseman from Terrytown stout there. Well, the way that he dissected very quickly. This is a two-on-one. Right here, two-on-one. His job is to deny any pass to Tavares. And then 
Stick rotates over, and it becomes another two-on-one, just in desperation for him. Look at him track it with his eyes. Changes the whole complexion of the intermission if you get to a 3-1. Super job from Pesci. Freddie Anderson put the catching glove on it. Now 11.6 seconds remain in the second period. Face off to the right of Anderson. Won't do it again. We'll have to put time back on the clock. Is about 1.9 fell off of it. We're back to 11.6. Do the draw again. Trocek against Tavares. Tavares wins it back for Riley. Riley tries to get it to the bumper position. Shea right on the spot to bother Matthews. Now Shea gets it into the Toronto zone. He'll throw and goes just wide. One second left in the period, and we hit zeros. And the Carolina Hurricanes storm back here. They came into the second period down one nothing. They got a different feeling now. Coming up, the PNC Bank second intermission report. Stephen Lawrence will talk with Abby Labar. We'll hear from David Ayers, because the last time the Canes played the Leafs, it was the David Ayers game, and Tripp and I will have some highlights for you. All coming up, Carolina, three goals in this second period. Sebastian Ajo got the party started. Stephen Lawrence with an individual effort. The Carolina Hurricanes will get one more from Nino Niederreiter and take a 3-1 lead into the break. started it. Nino Niederreiter with a big goal and Stevie Lawrence with his first of the season. Those are your goal scorers that set us up here for the start of the third period. As the Canes have that two goal lead over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Carolina 4-0 on the season coming off of their road trip where they close it out with a 5-1 win in Columbus and of course the big story Frederick Anderson playing against his former team the Maple Leafs the Kane's netminder, 4-0 on the season. We'll see how this 20 minutes will play out as the third period underway in Raleigh with Trip Tracy, Abby Labar, Shane Willis, and our fantastic Valley Sports crew. I'm Mike Maniscalco. Thanks for joining us here on your Monday night. And the Canes try to pay it off for you. And Svechnikov throw the puck into the corner and chase it and get it himself. He and Brody meet along the boards and Tara Vinen will come up with a loose puck for Carolina. Svechnikov will lose an edge, but good job by Ethan Bear to pinch in to keep it alive now in front for Tara Vinen. He was looking for a small space, couldn't find it. Campbell with a save. And Svechnikov had set up Tara Vinen and that would have ripped the roof off of this place. What a pass, and it started with Svechnikov getting in on the forecheck with a big hit. He's not dipping his toe into the period. Now Bear hammers one from the right side of the red line on Jack Campbell. He has to play it. We get a meeting of the minds, and Jordan Stahl comes out with a puck to Shea. Across to Pesci. Pesci wires one just wide. Shea on the recovery. Niederreiter giving a heavy hit from behind in the boards from Hall. And the shot was flung by Shea. Campbell gets it, and it's a chance for us to get a look at your Taco Bell take, Trip. Well, I think we have to start with uh, recognizing just what a period that second period was. <laughs> that was stellar. And desperation continues to be evident. And when I think of it, of course, Lawrence, the desperation on that goal that will be all over uh, the networks across North America, I'm sure. The desperation from Tavo Teravainen on one of the two penalty kills. Pesci at the end of the period. I mean, this is October. This is a, a Rod Brindamore coach team. When have they ever cheated us with their effort and their desperation in any month? None that I can recall is the Canes off of the faceoff. Ian Cole hammered one, but that hits off of a couple of bodies and goes away. And that's the one thing that Rod Brindamore talked about this week, as a matter of fact, is icing against Carolina. It's a chance for us to get a look at the undefeated teams that are left in the National Hockey League. The Florida Panthers at 5-0 are up 3-1 right now as well. And 
The Edmonton Oilers are the story out in the Pacific. St. Louis 4-0, and the Canes are 4-0. and So that's it. Those are the unbeatens that are left, Trip. Well, to continue with my theme of desperation, it's easy to take a breath when you get off to this type of start. And the Hurricanes just don't. I mean, that's that makes it even more impressive. Yes, for the unbeatens, Florida up 3-1 over Arizona. And the Blues, they are scoreless right now with the Kings just started the second period there. And now we've got some action continuing in Carolina where the Hurricanes trying to get to 5-0. Up 3-1 over the Maple Leafs. And now Trocek with a steal. Works his way to Natchez. Natchez along the boards. Looking for an outlet. We'll reverse it for Trocek. Trocek across the way for Bear. Bear fires one and Campbell detects that with the glove. Where is this game at if you don't get the two monstrous kills in the second period? Tim Gleason runs the kill. It's like a power play. I mean, you want to come away with conversions all the time, but when they happen, down one nothing and then with the lead, and Pesci and Slavin had taken the penalty. And the Hurricanes have penalty killers played with Tim Gleason's character. They have all year. Oh, Canes showing that character. By the way, they have showed a lot of character in the third period this year, Trip. They have eight goals in the third period in four games, and they have spread the wealth. They've scored two goals in every third period this season. We'll see if that continues. As the shot was put on by Comp, but that would be deflected, so it doesn't find Anderson. You just got to wonder. If you're Carolina, if you keep leaning on Toronto, what can happen is Engvall's shot goes wide of the net. The way that Toronto comes into this game tonight, 7-1 loss against Pittsburgh. A lot of questions in Carolina right now with a three-goal second period. We'll see what else is going on as we find out from Abby Labar. What's going on, Abby? Well, guys, I just talked to Rod Brindamore about the speed of this game and how you establish your game in it. And he said, we've got to be better out of our own end. It's the play along the perimeters, the battles on the boards and the wall. You have to win because these guys are going to try to press here. Absolutely. Great stuff, Abby. And the head coach would know what's coming this way. Now it's Steve Lawrence. We'll get the puck in deep and make a change for the Carolina Hurricanes. Well, Lawrence's goal started with uh, having to stay on the ice off of icing and doing exactly that. Martin Hook and step up. Uh, Matthews shot. And this is the net. Nylander will walk it to Matthews. His tough chance. Anderson with the save. He learned from the first time as Matthews scored the first way. Now Nylander with a loose puck. He'll ring the post. This is Nylander. Body could squeeze that on the near side. And Anderson got a little help there. Now Matthews trying to step away from Svechnikov. Aho comes to help his winger, and the Canes will clear, and they'll get a change. I'll tell you this, Nylander, he challenged big time on that quickly developing shot from Nylander after the second attempt at Matthews stopped. Hey, life is not about chasing a mistake, correct? It's right. about moving on. Dear friend on dear friend. Doesn't get the stick square early in the hockey game. And now, Matthews tries to do it. Look at that stick. Look at that stick. And even though he leads it just a, a little bit too much, the stick was in good position. And he had those flipper pads behind to make the square save. And those two spent yesterday together. Now the Canes would like to give Frederick Anderson a win. He's out in front. Niederreiter gets it. Still loose. Marner will get a stick to it and knock it out. As Niederreiter had a dangerous chance developing from the captain's stall. 15-45 remaining here in the third period. Carolina up 3-1. to one. Pesci with a good stick at his own blue line. Making entry hard for the Maple Leafs into the Canes end. And this does not sound like a Monday night crowd, folks. The Canes fans have been raucous. Now Nick Ritchie has it into the Canes zone. Diving attempt there by Ian Cole. And that slows up Richie's progression. Now Tavares trying to step away from Stahl. Stahl seals off Tavares along the boards. So the puck comes free. Tavares has it. Laid off for Riley. Bouncing puck. Anderson gets a glove to it. Second attempt. Tavares can't get it on. Anderson back into the crease. And Shea with the puck. Jordan Stahl. When your captain leads with the action that he has every night this year and has for 
the year since he's become the captain. You can't help but fall in line. Now he just saved a goal. Now a puck off the boards trying to have the diagonal pass for Richie and the Canes will intercept. And it's Trocek with a step. He'll put one from a sharp angle that goes over the top of Campbell's net. Second opportunity for Slavin. That one's on the mark. But Campbell will hang on. And you combine his smarts with his pride. He actually atypically turned a puck over. He didn't chase the mistake. And he has that reach, that stall bunion reach. Freddie can't corral it. But who's in there? Captain on captain to deny the Tavares chance. Jordan Stahl. The other thing that's so impressive, always getting the face off, Todd, always above 50%. This year he's above 60%. As Lawrence wins the draw, pushes it forward for Martinuk. Carolina keeps the puck in for the moment. Yeah, excellent work back at the center ice line by Stepan. Prevents a Toronto flying of the zone. A hole behind his own net. Being watched by Martinuk, you see it there. His stretch pass finds Kampf, who is taken down by D'Angelo. Now Kampf with it in the corner. He'll send it behind the net. Engvall trying to get to it. A shot from the sharp angle put on by Toronto and easily detected by Anderson and kicked out of the zone. The Canes now trying to lock up their own end and they'll make some wholesale changes. They'll get to an errant pass to Svechnikov. Sweeps it in. Riley will get to it before the Canes can get everyone in the zone. Now the puck just gets past Jacob Slavin. Along the boards, it's Bunny. Bunch of players entangled at the near boards and Bunning and Bear shoving with each other behind the play. Riley, he'll get the puck forward where Brody will have it. Sending it into the Canes and gets through Bear. Anderson holds the post, has two on Bunning. Good work there by Anderson, but Nylander to the loose puck. He'll send it to the open side where Bunning, he'll lose control to Svechnikov, who detects Teravainen, knocks it down. He's got Ajo with him. Great stick by Brody, though. As Tara Vinan took a peek and saw that he had Ajo, Brody stops that chance. Spetsnikov winning that board battle with Toronto pressing was exactly what Rod Brindamore told Abby Labar that she just reported. Now Carolina. Yes for Foss. 3-1 lead for the Canes. 12-35 remaining here in the third period. Carolina's just second game here at PNC Arena this year. Fifth overall, won all three games on the road. Now this play goes off of the glass and into the netting and will give us all a chance to catch our breath in the third period with the Canes up 3-1. Uh, as we welcome you back to the third period, it was Austin Matthews who scored on his best friend, Freddie Anderson. But Freddie Anderson has been good following that one goal. I mean, the two guys, you're talking a goaltender from Denmark and a forward Arizona. These are some posts that Austin Matthews put on his Instagram of the two of them the day that Freddie Anderson signed with the Canes. You could tell that Matthews was going to miss his buddy, but it's funny because they do seem like they have two very different personalities, guys, even though Austin Matthews says they have a lot in common. Absolutely, but right now, Freddie Anderson just wants to keep Austin Matthews' name off of the score sheet. It's Mitch Marner as the puck circling in the Cane zone. Good work there. Good caricature, too, of the two of them from their Toronto days. As Carolina will escape the zone, and puck will be flung out. And great play by Pesci to recognize they need a change. Well, it's amazing what teammates can become friends. Goaltenders and forwards, you'd think that combination wouldn't mix, but it did in Toronto, and they have the utmost respect for each other. Trip, you had a great conversation, too, about it with Matthews about Anderson's professionalism. We talk about the bunk bed situation, though. <laughs> you better be best friends if you're dealing with bunk beds. Either that or stepbrothers, one or the other. <laughs> well, that was a good one. Thank you. Now the Canes clear the puck to center ice. And now Trocek finished hard by Muzzin. Along the boards, nothing coming of that. Wool will get the puck forward, and Trocek keeping an eye on his man. He's going to ask for a change. He'll get one. As the wave 
has started here in Carolina. He wants to see Freddie Anderson's quaff on that punk bed. Because <laughs> he had quite the wave. Yes, he did. Now the Canes fetch Nikoff to Teravine and across the oh, and Campbell gets over. That's Jack, that's Jack Campbell's best save of the night, robbing Sebastian Ajo. What an exceptional save by Campbell. I go back to Rod Brindamore, the coach of the year's brilliance. He didn't wait around. Put Svechnikov on this line with Tara and Ajo early in this game. And there you just about saw tic-tac and a beautiful toe. Jack Campbell has been beaten three times, but he's had some tremendous lateral saves in this game. Now Lawrence will win the draw. Martinuk and Brody, as you can see in the corner. Now Martinuk comes out, and he's going to draw a penalty. So the Canes see Anderson go to the bench, but Riley will touch up the puck. And that line continuing to do great work as David Kampf will be heading to the penalty box. And Carolina gets a power play. Carolina's fourth line has been... You hear the announcement from one of the referees, T.J. Luxmore. Carolina's fourth line has been a big part of this thing. Naturally, the Lawrence goal that Martin Nook and Stefan factored in on. I, I had uh, lunch yesterday with former Hurricane Peter Morozik and Jordan Martin Nook. And Morozik mentioned how much Sheldon Keith uses his fourth line. And he figured that Carolina's fourth line would have to be an impact line in this game, and they have been. Kane's over one on the power play. It is a power ball power play for the Hurricanes here in the third period. See if they can continue the power surge. The Hurricanes, six for 17 on the man advantage this year. Into the zone, Trocek pulls away from Muzzin. Svechnikov tries to get a stick to it. Instead, it'll come out and a two on one developing for Toronto. Marner to Kerfoot. Kerfoot goes a little too far. Second chance. Anderson gets the glove to it. Short handed. Freddie Anderson robs Kerfoot. He can't believe it. Even though he won't get a save on the first one, he made it impossible to score on the breakaway. Heck of a pass from Marner. And maybe he does get a piece. And then Kerfoot retrieves the puck, elevates the puck, and Freddie makes a spectacular save. Now in all of that, Trocek was guilty of the hook. I think Trocek would argue he missed her foot. What a save. Oh, oh, oh. Get that man a Danish, the great Dane. Well, Mr. Anderson in the matrix yet again. Now it's a four on four activity on the ice as the Canes power play was short lived. Now an opportunity for Riley as Brody passed up a walk down Broadway. And passed too far. And now Nylander gets the puck up top and Brody fans on the attempt. And Tara Biden will chop it out of the zone. So we've got four on four for the next 57 seconds. Riley to Nylander into the Kane zone. Nylander to Matthews. Matthews, a little too fancy with it, takes the puck out of the zone. 40 seconds left of four on four hockey. And then the Leafs will have an abbreviated power play. And 30 seconds left. Four on four. Svechnikov lays it back for Shea. And Natchez and the Canes, they can generate some offense here in the last 20 seconds of four on four. Natchez goes to the corner. Muzzin loses his angle. Natchez collides with Svechnikov and hampers the opportunity there for the Carolina winger. Eight seconds left to four on four. And Toronto will be going on the man advantage. As Muzzin into the Kane zone. Good stick by Svechnikov, but it's kept in by Engvall. And Toronto on the power play for the next 33. And Brady Shea strong in his own end trying to clear. And Carolina does. As it's batted out by who else? The captain, Jordan Stahl. And Stahl keeping an eye on as we get a look from the Leafs breakout. Marner avoids a check from Slavin. 
Nylander will get to it for the moment. Stahl chops it to the point. Sandin with the keep in. Across for Matthews. Matthews' shot is bothered by Slavin, and that goes out of play. Again, the responsible stick of Jacob Slavin here on the penalty kill. Well, the spontaneously responsible and creative stick. Because he's trying to go stick on puck initially, but then he has to because he's lost the positioning battle slightly, so he goes down with a shaft on the ice. And he's able to redirect the puck up into the netting. That's an elite skill set defensively from Slayer. In four seconds, Trocek will come out of the penalty box. Right now the Leafs trying to win the draw. It's pushed behind. And the Canes penalty killers have done it again. Trocek out of the box and a two-on-one developing. Trocek lowers the shoulder, has step on with him, turns around, wrap chance, and somehow Campbell makes the save. Oh, Trocek almost snuck it through the wickets. The Carolina Hurricanes up 3-1 to one with 7.47 left in the third. We got a good one in Raleigh. The Carolina Hurricanes get to enjoy some home cooking for the next four games starting here tonight. They got the 3-1 lead over the Leafs. Our next telecast will be on Thursday when the Canes take on the Bruins. Starts at 6.30 with Hurricanes Live. Then the Blackhawks on Friday and the Coyotes on Halloween. A little afternoon trick-or-treat all on Valley Sports Health. Face-off in the Toronto zone is won by the Leafs. Batted out to the neutral zone. Now Ian Cole will pick up the puck in his own end. 7.35 remaining here in the third period. Kokaniemi. Has a step, sends it across for Trocek, who knocks it out of air. Now to Natchez, he winds, fires, can't get it through. Penalty coming up to the Leafs as Campbell somehow denied Natchez his opportunity. Well, I, I've said in the first several games that we've been treated to easy broadcasts based on the way this team has played. Work comes before skill. Once you have to work with all the skill that Carolina has, you have skill in spades. The guy we talked about along with Anderson in our open, Trocek, has he ever worked? Kokaniemi managed the puck inside the offensive blue line. Fearless nature, nature's going to the front of the net, and you draw a penalty. Well, the Canes will get their third power play opportunity of the night as Andre Kasha goes to the box at the 12.36 mark, and it's a power ball power play for the Carolina Hurricanes. Toronto will stunt any momentum, clearing the zone, taking a couple of seconds off of the start of this man advantage. The Canes, 6 for 18 on the season, coming in with the third rank power play. And now Teravainen tries to find Svechnikov, but getting in the way of that opportunity were the Leafs. And coming the other way, it's Kerfoot. Kerfoot. He came across from Colorado in the Nazem Kadri deal a few seasons ago. Remember the last Carolina power play. The Leafs are going to play the scoreboard, go for it short-handed. I don't think Rod with the second group will go with two defensemen. I thought on that initial entry, Terabinen could have been more selfish and shot the puck. Something to pay mind to is Ajo. Trying to get the Canes power play going here right now. It is... And sputtering with this attempt is 60 seconds already gone by. And here comes Engvall. And the Leafs shorthanded out in front for Nylander. Fork just wide. And Nylander will track down the puck. And they'll just rag it back and take some time off of their penalty kill here. He's up front. It's Riley. His shot bothered by D'Angelo. Way off the mark. Gaines trying to gain entry into the Toronto zone. And Natchez does so. Lays it off. Niederreiter quickly across. First stall. The captain to Niederreiter. Back to stall. Stall can't settle the bouncing puck. Muzzin sends it around. Sandine, it gets past Natchez. And just 15 seconds left on this man advantage that is quickly evaporating for Carolina. You get a good look at Brett Pesci. Heads up through the neutral zone. Natchez to Kokaniemi. Kokaniemi, one on two, gets it to stall. And Kasha comes out of the box, so we're five on five. Pesci with a good keep it. Goes down low for Natchez. Natchez behind the Toronto net. Looking for some help. Finds Kokaniemi. Back to Natchez. Up top. Pesci's shot is blockered away. Good work there by Campbell. He made two big saves here. That one he did detect on Pesci's drive, though. Well, look at the improvement. 
handling the puck with his defense. Situations like that from opening night to now for Anderson. He would no trip about being comfortable, and now the Canes. Steve Lawrence has it. Sends it up top, Slavin. It's one of those things where Rod Brindamore talked about this team meshing and coming together. They are certainly doing that through the first five games. Now Martinuk to step on. The veteran gets it to the point. Slavin off the backboards looking for Lawrence. The two active off of the boards. Marner will just flip it to safety as the Leafs need to make a change. That fourth line just hemmed in the Mitch Martin, the Austin Matthews line for Carolina. And now 4-15 remains here in the third period. Carolina, 3-1 lead over the Maple Leafs. Kane's just their second game here at PNC Arena this season. Three of their first four were on the road, but they're going to have four in a row here in Carolina. No icing on the clearing attempt by Toronto. Carolina's fourth line has taken on a bigger role in this game. They've delivered. Right now, their goal is the difference. Now it's Spezza turning and puts one on that Anderson gets the pad to. Sharp angle shot by Richie and Anderson will hang on and stop everything there. Some pushes, some shoves, and the Canes have a 3-1 lead with three minutes and 45 seconds in the third period. We're coming down the stretch. Canes looking to go to 5-0 on the season. Open. It started with Sebastian Ajo with a great stick and a deflection to level the game. And the individual effort of Steve Lawrence, his first of the year, put the Canes up one. Then Jacob Slavin with a dipsy dude and Nino Niederreiter and his tough chance put Carolina up 3-1. Yeah, and 3.45 left down a couple of goals. Sheldon Keith has lifted Jack Campbell. So an empty net for Toronto. So six on five for the Leafs to come into tonight's contest. 0-2 on the road and 2-3-1 and one on the season. One of the favorites in the Atlantic Division, so an empty net for Carolina to work with as Ajo chops it out of the zone. Jack Campbell has made 28 saves tonight on the bench for the Maple Leafs. They're trying to gain some traction as Marner gains his own to Nylander. He plays it off the boards looking for Marner. That was a pass, not a shot. A little too far in the Canes. Flip and clear. 3.15 remaining here in the third period. As Riley can settle the puck. His long pass misses everybody, and that's going to be icing on the Leafs. Yeah, and that's going to be Campbell back. Nice job stacking up the neutral zone, forcing that from the Hurricanes. And this heavy line that's been so, so good this year. Jordan Stahl, Neo Niederreiter, and Jesper Foss. And they have one more quality shift on the four check to keep Campbell in. Face off to the right of Jack Campbell, who has to return to the net after going to the bench for the extra attacker. And Stahl wins the draw back for Shea. Shea, his shot goes over the top of Campbell, kept in at the point by Pesci. He goes right back to Shea, out in front, deflected by Faust, and Campbell makes the save. Yes, for Faust on the front porch. And now it's Nylander, can't get to the puck, and the Canes will roll it back in on Jack Campbell. He has to stay in the nets. Toronto wants to get their goaltender out. He's creeping out of the zone. As Matthews tries to stick handle around Pesci. Pesci knocks it away into the corner. Campbell's on the bench. Extra attacker out for the Leafs. Two and a half to go here in Raleigh. 3-1 lead for Carolina. Now Tavares to Marner. Back down the boards to Tavares. He's shot. Deflected by Pesci. That goes wide. Nylander. His pass. Pinballs out to the Toronto zone as the Hurricanes again. Great sticks in the lane. Giving absolutely no breath to this light Leafs team. And now it's Svechnikov to Teravainen with a turnover. Can't handle the pass though and Tavares has it. Being bothered by Svechnikov. The Canes making it difficult for the Leafs to get out of their own end. Now Engvall does into the Kane zone. A minute 50 to go. His centering pass intercepted by Slavin and Carolina will just chip it out along the boards. Svechnikov trying to read the play but Sandine gets there first. His pass up forward for Bunny. Wrapped into the Kane zone. Anderson comes out and plays it. And he gets it past Matthews. Can the Canes clear? No, kept in at the point by Sandine. I'd love to see Freddie go for one, given the opportunity with a two-goal cushion. We'll see if that can develop. A minute 20 to go here. 
That would be something against his old team where he spent five years in Toronto. Signed a two-year contract this offseason with Carolina, and he has been absolutely brilliant for the Hurricanes in the first five games this season. Toronto now with 65 seconds on the clock. Lose the puck. Sveshnikov has got a step. Empty net. Bullseye. Andre Sveshnikov with the icing on the Carolina King. The empty net specialist, who's a specialist in just about all things, does it again. Heck of a job from Slavin, who's had another Herculean night. Little one-tapper. Uncanny number of empty netters Fetchnikov has had in his very young NHL career. Oh, what a night. Well, this one here can cap off a big night for Frederick Anderson against his former team, the Canes goaltender. 21 saves, just 45 seconds left in this one for Svechnikov. His fifth goal of the season. He has been red hot, and Spechnikov has had a point in every game this season for the Carolina Hurricanes. He's taken the goal scoring lead back from Sebastian Ajo. And now the Canes will watch Toronto bat the puck into their own end. It was with a high stick. So smart play there by Tony D'Angelo not to touch it. Just let David Camp get near it. Stopping play with 21.7 seconds left. Any play there by the Kings defenseman. E extremely smart play. Celebrated his birthday yesterday. This has been an inspiring effort. Uh, Kings are gonna win it for Freddie. Against a desperate team. Took over the game in the second period. Huge marks to the fourth line. They're gonna get the game winner, it looks like. Now a shot from far away from Dermott, and that'll be handled by Anderson. Yeah, give me a minute. I, I have to think about what I'm going to ask Freddie, because I have to think he's going to be the first star. I think that would be it. You get the way you've been able to predict things. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go against you. Well, I tell you what. Look at how desperate of a game the Canes have played. They've dug in for their new goaltender. Indeed, they have. As Niederreiter will push the puck in the Toronto zone. We're under 10 seconds in the game, five seconds left. D'Angelo has it in his skates. Another chance for Anderson with a save. He denies Engvall, why not? Another save for Anderson. Another win for Anderson. Another W for the Hurricanes. And they are 5-0 on the season. Stephen Lawrence, his goal will be the game winner tonight on an individual effort. And a night when the Canes wanted to win for their goaltender. This is a special night. Very special night. It will be treated to a surge. The penalty kill, the fourth line, the total team effort, the desperation, and again, timely, timely saves from the former Maple Leaf, and I'm very happy to say, a Carolina hurt. Well, a loud PNC arena here on a Monday night will be treated to their second storm surge of the season. They salute the crowd tonight and the crowd, the crowd saluting right back to the Carolina Hurricanes. Coming up, we'll have the three stars. We're waiting for the big hug. That is now a part of every Canes win.